मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड फैकल्टी सीनियर मोस्ट फैकल्टी ऑफ साई विज्ञान भारती जूनियर कॉलेज वेलकमिंग यू फॉर द फ्रेशर क्लास फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्शन क्लास ऑफ अवर इंटरमीडिएट सी सी दैट इज मेन सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डील विथ कॉमर्स एंड फैकल्टी मेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स इन साई विज्ञान भारती जूनियर कॉलेज फॉर गर्ल्स वेलकमिंग यू फॉर माई इंट्रोडक्शन लेक्चर so my name is anand and i have completed my post graduation in accountancy and have did my ipcc from institute of chartered accountants of india so before i start with my commerce subject because as per the intermediate standard we have 11th and 12th standards covered in intermediate so we have four groups mainly in intermediate covering one npc ypc cc and mac so we have four groups in intermediate mainly for the 11th and 12th standards npc and ypc covers the science groups or science subjects so we are going to deal with second two groups that is called as cec and mac so cec stands for civics economics and commerce mac stands for maths economics and commerce so once again i congratulate all those students who have passed i know have taken the subjects in intermediate choosing commerce as one of their optionals so before i start with explanation to my commerce subject i want you to brush up with your another two subjects which are covered in our commerce related with our commerce so those people i don't know why you are being chosen one of the group as cc because before we select our group or before we enter to 11th standard we have to choose one of the groups for our further studies some students select mbc as their intermediate group with their motive or objective in the future to become an engineer or to become architect or to go to scientist or to go in some other fields where they are having the subjects like maths physics and commerce people who are opting for ypc they are having an objective to become a doctor or they want to go for agriculture engineers or agriculture scientists or they want to join in pharmaceuticals or they want to go in such a way where they are having the intervention of physics chemistry botany zoology like that but these two subjects or for those people who are having and totally interest or they are having their objective or life ambition to cover the maths physics biology or chemistry like that but those people who are not choosing this two they are having an another option called as cc or mbc now today most of the people are taking cc or mbc as one of their subject first we will start with mbc mbc stands for the maths economic science commerce as one of the options in your intermediate group those people who want to exclude from their studies physics and chemistry but they are having a good knowledge but they are having a good grip under the maths but they don't want other two options physics and chemistry they will opt for 
maths, economics, and commerce. So, what are the uses of obtaining CEC and MEC? We will discuss meanwhile. Second one, CEC. CEC is an another subject option which is provided to you. Civics, economics, and commerce. Civics is a subject totally which we have studied from our past three years, that is 8th, 9th, and 10th. This is only an option different between CC and MEC. Here we are seeing one of the important topic as a maths. Here we are seeing one of the important topic as a civics. So those people who are opting for the career as chartered accountants, lawyers, those who want to go for teaching profession or those who want to settle in any multinational companies or those who want to prepare for groups taking one of the important subject either in optionals maths or civics or economics they will prepare like we call that as a another groups will call that as a IPS or sorry Union Public Service Commission or we can also call it as a uh, professional for uh, subjects like management and other things. So those people who are opting for becoming a chartered accountant compulsory the background uh, the foundation what you will put in 11th and 12th standard because nowadays after completing your intermediate if you are going for the CA company secretary as a foundation course, if you are opting for the foundation of CA, CS, compulsory you should have maths as a background at 11th and 12th standard along with economics and commerce. That will be a most, the priority will be given to the student who is opting in the 11th and 12th standard maths as a one of the foundation subjects. Even CC people can also opt, but you will get the benefit when you go for writing the exams because you will be having some simple mathematical subject, uh, simple mathematical problems, or you will be having some small math business mathematical calculations also there. Even the people who have completed MPC by PC, they can go for CA or they can go for any other foundation courses in the commerce group but in the foundation or in the entrance exam they are going to get the benefit but here you will not get the benefit one day but after completing your intermediate with MPC, MPC and CC you can go for BCom the students who are completing intermediate in CC group and MEC group, immediately after intermediate, along with the degree, they can also opt for CA or CS or CWA like that by writing the foundation or entrance exams. But if you don't want to go for any entrance exam, you want to first complete your graduation. Because the subject what you have opted MEC and CC is a good subject and it is a demanded subject, management subject which is having a good market today. Okay, so your life is going to be like this. You are going to complete either CC or MEC in your intermediate first and second year. After completing your intermediate, you will take BCom. You have options. In BCom, you have a different streams like you can go for computers, you can go for regulars, you can go for vocational, you can go for honors, etc. Any of the BCom you can opt. 
either computers, regulars, vocation and honors. Our college is extremely providing and a degree subjects, degree education in the computers and regulars. Because in twin cities, Vignan Bharati is special, specialized only for a good commerce education. So, if you are after completing BCom, if you get what to do, how to set it, or what further studies you have to go, then you have an option. Either you go for MCom, or either you go for MBA, or either then you decide on going for CA, CS, or you go for law degrees. Like that. After completing degree, if you are having a still interest in studying further, then you go post graduation. What is the course you can adopt at the post graduation level? We will take MCOM. Those students who have an interest in teaching to the degree level, interior level, or who want to settle themselves in the teaching field, they will go for MCOM. Or not only having an interest in teaching, but we want to settle in the bank jobs or we want to do a professional job in multinational companies or insurance companies or any governmental jobs where we can work as a clerk or we can work as an auditor or we can undertake any job, then we prefer MCOM. Those people who are having interest purely in management course, then we will advise them to go for MBA, Master in Business Administration. That means a specialized course nowadays having a good demand and modern, since modern days, this MBA has gained so much growth and development that after degree, so many people are opting for MBA. They are doing specialization in MBA like marketing, sales, accounting, taxation, statistics. Like that they are going for specialization. They are completing their MBA and they are settling either in India in a big companies at a big management places or they are going to foreign countries for the settling there with MBA. Suppose if you don't want to go for MBA, then another option you are having, you go for professional courses in accountancy called as Chartered Accountancy or Company Secretary or you can go for another university course called as a professional course in law, we will call that as a lawyers, advocates or engineers. Even after BCom, you have one more option. Those people who don't want to go for the higher teaching level, they want to settle in teaching to the schools or school going children, then they will opt as BA, Bachelor in Education System. So, like this, the courses will go according to the course, according to the your interest in the subject, you will have a bright future, good future, colorful future where you can learn and you can teach, you can earn and you can settle in your life. So, before I start with my subject as commerce, commerce is divided into two parts. Commerce is being divided into two parts in intermediate. One part is called theory part. We will call this as A. One part is called accounting part. We will call this as B. So, civics, economics and commerce. So, before I start with some explanation to the subject, first of all, let me tell you from the point of Telangana Intermediate Board Syllabus, a student of Intermediate Commerce has 100 marks paper in Commerce which is divided into two parts. A part we are going to call it as a theoretical part 
and B part, we are going to call it as an accounting part. Okay, so now in the first year also we are going to study commerce means it includes theory and accounting. So to make you clear clarity, A part and B part. So civics. What you are going to learn in civics if you take CC in civics. What you have been learning in your 8th, 9th and 10th class because in the school classes, that is in the school days, you completed 8th, 9th and 10th. You have one special subject called as a social studies. In social studies, you have four parts. The subject is divided into four parts. One is geography, history, civics and economics. Geography deals with total environment. History deals with what has happened in the past, what is happening now. One is civics. Civics means a social being. Human being is treated as a social organism. That is, a person cannot lead without an help or without a group imbalance. He needs every time someone in his life, a group activity that is a social animal, human is treated as a social animal. So always it depends on someone for something and as you are a social being, you have to understand what is your rights, your duties, what is the government, from where we got the word, word, word called as civics has developed. Okay, what are uh, the things we need to study about government, state, because you are living in a one association or it is a group where we are living with different people having a different ways of thinking, ideologies, culture and other things. So you have to become an accustomed to everyone. So what all the things we cannot, we are not living under the rule of a king or queen or a dictator. We are living in a place where we are being given having a special constitution for us. We are having a fundamental rights given to us by our constitution. We are being living in the world where India is called today as the second highest populated country after China. More than 130 crore of population is the highly populated country. So we are following a democratic rule of electing our government. So this government is a part of your social service. What is government? From where the government has come? Why we have to obey the rules, regulations of government? Then we have how the government is to be elected. What are the ways of electing the government? Direct way, indirect way. How the public opinion will be collected in a democratic system? What are the different types of parliamentary systems available for us? What is the words called as liberty? fraternity or equality or what is UNO, United Nations Organizations, then these all are covered under your subject called as civics, which is already you are having some knowledge which you gather or gain in your previous classes. Now coming to the economics, economics is a part of your regular life. The word economics itself has come from your home management. How you are going to manage the things systematically in a home or in an institution or in a place called as a business. Systematically we are going to do the things, arrange the things, complete the things, complete the task. Then we will call it as a home management. 
So economics is one of the subject which is going to be in your course. We have in your 10th class or in your earlier classes you have seen economical status, economics of different countries. Which countries following which type of economics? Capitalistic economy or socialistic economy or mixed economical system. What is this capitalistic economy? What is this socialistic economy? Capitalistic economy means in simple language I will tell. It is the economy system where we are going to give priority to the sole proprietor. That is a privatization, industrial people who are going to become, who are going to use our capitalistic resource, capitalistic basis. They are giving priority to them. Then socialistic economy. Socialistic economy means where we are going to redistribute the wealth or we are going to prepare our policies or we are going to prepare our uh, programs for the development basing on the thought of or taking into consideration employees or poor people as well as rich people. That means equal distribution of wealth will be taken before the preparation of the sub uh, concept or before the redistribution of the wealth. Then coming to the mixed economy. Mixed economy is an economy where we are going to see the take the features from capitalistic as well as from the socialistic economy. Then uh, again we will learn here in our intermediate how to calculate gross national income. What is national income? National income means it is the sum value of the goods and services produced in the year in a particular period is called as national income. How to compute the national income? What are the different ways of computing the national income? And how we are going to collect the data in our country in regarding to industries, big industries, small industries, medium sized industries, how we are going to fix the price for the commodity what you have produced that we are going to call as demand and supply. Suppose a businessman is producing the good or a article. When he produces one article, he will incur certain money on that. He will incur certain cost on that commodity. The cost he will be incurring on land, labor, capital and profit. Whatever the cost you are incurring, you will incur to manufacture that commodity. Once you manufacture that commodity, how you will see the demand of that commodity in the market? That means when you get the profit, how you will distribute among your factors of production called as land, labor, capital and organization. So how the supply will be done? How a human behave rationally regarding the factors will you see in economics. Then coming to the subject called as commerce, a very important subject. Now we are going to discuss because in the earlier classes like 10th and 9th class, you, you might have been seeing two types of mathematics, one is called as composite mathematics and one other one is called as a business mathematics. Composite mathematics means a mathematics which is having all big, large and difficult cumbersome calculations using different formulas at different ways in different angles like real numbers, integers, polynomial, binomial, trigonometry, algebra, these all are called as a composite mathematics. That means we use only high level of calculations in that. Second type of mathematics you might have been seen, but you don't know that is what we will call. That is called as business mathematics. A simple mathematics 
related to the business that is mean median more or we will call that as business mathematics linear programming probability or how to calculate plus minus or multiplication so simple simple mathematics which we will use drawing the diagrams pi diagram or horizontal uh, or ogive curve like that simple mathematics which you have learnt in your last or previous class is called as a business mathematics so this business mathematics simple calculations we will use now so that is this now our commerce part coming to the commerce part we are going to have in first year theory accounting this is we are going to call it as a this is we are going to call it as a b the total marks given for this in the annual exam is 100 50 marks are scattered for theory 50 marks are given for accounting now in the theory let me first explain about the things or the chapter names which are given for us here we have introduction then basic concepts then we have types of business types of business then we have sole proprietor joint hindu family then a partnership then we have cooperative cooperative societies then we have joint stock companies and giving in brief i'm not going as per whatever the sub chapters or units in a telangana the telugu academy book i'm just briefing you in my subject what is there and according to that i am going to start my explanation then we have sources of capital uh, sources of capital then we have here mnc's then we have recent trend recent trend in recent trend in commerce i trade this is a brief description of your theory part what we are going to learn then coming to the accountancy part in accounting part first we are going to see introduction to accounting introduction to accounting then we will see double entry system then we have journal entries then we have subsidiary ledger then we have subsidiary books then we have trial bank reconciliation scheme then we have trial balance then we have final accounts right girls so i gave the brief 
description about my subject. See, your 100 marks what you are preparing throughout the year consists of two papers. That two papers, 50 marks one paper and 50 marks another paper. But you have to write as one paper only for 100. We divided that into part A and part B. Part A is totally a theoretical part. You have to prepare question and answer. But preparing the question and answer, you should understand what is cause. This theory is not just mugging up. For mugging up also, you need to under you need an understanding of your subject powers. Then you will understand very easily what is accountancy. Accountancy is very simple. It's only solving the problems. Understanding how to write the books of accounts. Understanding from where we got accountancy into existence. Who is called as a father of accountants? Why we need to learn a subject called as accountancy? If you don't learn accountancy, what is going to happen? Nothing will happen, but everyone will come for learning something. When you are going to school, you have an ambition that you should pass 10th class. You should acquire 10 years of education in a school. After leaving the school, in the 10th year, your certificate what you are receiving from your school management should tell you that you are a profession, you have a knowledge gained in the school in English, Hindi, Telugu, Math, Science, Social, other things, which will give you a further encouragement to do the higher studies. Like that only, when we are learning a common subject, wherever you go, because it's not like that earlier two subjects, NPC and PYPC. NPC and PYPC is totally different. And MEC CEC is totally different. CEC MEC is a future oriented. That means wherever you go in your future, compulsory we will come across any subject or any things which you have learned in your civics, economics and commerce in your daily life. But in other groups, MPC and YPC, if you are opting, you will become doctor. What? That whatever you study, that will be useful only when you are in that profession. That will not be taken as a part of your regular life. So your regular life deals with your civics, economics and commerce. Wherever you go, suppose. You are now starting with your commerce. Example, what is mean by commerce? Commerce is nothing but, first thought we will take, what is human activity? Before we start with our subject, in this subject only, first introduction, what is human activity? See, every human activity means nothing but every activity which you are undertaking in your life with the intention or with an object of earning money to satisfy your basic needs. What is called as need? Another question you put to your mind. What is need? Suppose you are going from Sitting about to Kodi on vehicle. Suddenly you fell thirsty. You will drink cool drinks. When you drink cool drinks or when you imagine or when you get a thought of satisfying your need of drinking that cool drink, you should have money in your pocket. If you don't have money in your pocket and you are thinking of satisfying your need, from where you will satisfy? So, to satisfy this need, we should have money in our pocket. From where that money is coming in your pocket, we are using several activities. 
those activities which are intended or those activities which a human being is going to perform in his regular life which are going to earn some money for him we will call that as human or economic activity we will call that as what economic activity what is human activity those activities which you are going to take every day from morning to evening will call that as a human activity everyone will be busy suppose a teacher is teaching in a school he may teach for a free service he may teach for the salary a bus driver is driving the bus he may drive by taking the money if your father is going to office he is working there because after completing one month he is going to get the salary with that salary he is going to feed the family that is called human activities in human activities only we have two types economic and non economic what is human activity once again those activities which you undertake to satisfy your wants desires or basic needs we will call that as a human activity but that human activity is divided into how many parts two parts economic and non economic economic means any activity in your life which you are undertaking with an objective of earning money suppose a postman brings letter to your house he is delivering the letter to your house to your house in return he is getting a salary from his department postal department a postman is working in postal department he is delivering his let your letters and is receiving the salary a doctor working in hospital we get the salary when he treats the patient in his hospital a industrialist manufacture goods when a industrialist manufacture goods he is going to sell those goods to the people who are in need of those commodities in return he is going to get the money for the commodity what he is selling so he is engaged in doing that activity we call economic activity example singer singer may be busy in singing the songs to the film or to the episode he will not sing free of cost or he will not sing like a dedication to a special concert or to a special event in return he is going to earn or is in return is going to expect some benefit that benefit always will be in the money value only suppose a singer is singing the person who is asking to sing the song to that singer will pay for him he is going to call that as economic activity that means what all the things which you are undertaking with an objective or with an intention or uh, with an intention or with a motive of earning money we will call that as economic activity then what is non economic activity where there is no involvement of money where there is no involvement of money in your life you are taking any activity like example you take your mother mother is an important person in your life in your family she will be busy in performing so many things from morning to night when she goes to the bed bed she will be cooking the food she will be washing the utensils she will be washing washing the clothes or she will be uh, doing puja or she will be feeding you or she will be helping you in any activity in return you are not going to pay any price for her service you are not going to value her 
services provided by your mother to the family. She is doing that only with love, affection, or she is undertaking that as a part of her regular life. That it is called as non-economic activity. Suppose mother Teresa. You know the mother Teresa, who she was. She is a lady who has sacrificed her life for the development or upliftment of orphanage or old age people. So she did this with her whole heartedly. Towards love towards the mankind, serving towards the mankind with her property, with her uh, upliftment of particular sector. She has not expected anything in return for the services. What she wanted to do, then we will call that as non-economic activity. Suppose if you take an NCC candidate, National Credit Card. Those people who are willing to join in any of the organs of government like military, navy, police or anything. In the basic training, in the school level itself, they have to join in NCC. That means you are being trained up to 12th standard in armed forces, what all the basic things they need. So that will be given training. They are, if they are having a love, patriotism, if they are having affection towards their nation, people will join. They are not paid any price for that. Suppose if you want, if you are having a love towards your culture, suppose if you are having a love towards your religion, for which you want to explore or you want to get exploited in your society, then we will call that any activity if you take up, we will call that as a non-economical activity. Follow? So suppose if you are talking about economical activity, this economical activity we can discuss every what is economical activity? Any activity which is undertaken by human beings in order what all the things they are earning in order to satisfy their basic needs. Any activity which you undertake to satisfy your basic needs with the intention of earning money, we will call it as economical activity. So that economical activity we will study in three parts. One, employment. Number two, profession. Number three, business. So how you will be able to earn the money? Economical activity means every human, any human activity which is undertaken or backed up by earning of money in order to satisfy your needs, basic commodity, basic things which are going to arise in your life regularly, day to day life. How you are going to earn the money in your life? Some people will earn the money in the life regularly by doing employment. That is nothing but we will call that going for any type of job, employment, job or any type of undertakings where they are being treated as an employee. Employee means a person agreeing to work with another person, the person who is agreed to provide work to that person, then he will be called as employer and the person who is ready to work will be called as employee. The agreement between these two people is called as employment agreement or contract. The amount agreed by employer to pay to employee is called as remuneration. In other words, it is also called as salary or wages. So you might be knowing your father will be going to the job every day from morning, sometimes specified time and he will be returning back in the evening in some specified time. 
in between the gap of his time he will be spending his time in the office the office is the place where he is going to work for the employer the person who has given him the permission or the person who has agreed for him to work there for a specified price for a specified job for a specified time and specified things then we will call that as employment okay now second one we will call that as a profession profession means already here we have seen profession means a person who is earning money in his regular life by using his expertise knowledge skills communication and the subject in which he has taken the certification from the university like chartered accountant chartered accountant is a head of the accounting department that is a person who is having a fullest knowledge in accounting subjects example accounting subjects means all the those subjects commerce economics civics law income tax then we have banking insurance finance and we have secretarial work everything a person who is having a full overall grip and you can advise any person on any issue or any matter which is arise as a matter of collusion between one of the businessman his books of accounts or a businessman with government or a businessman with a sub, uh, buyer or supplier or manufacturer anyway then he has to take the guide right like guy advice or he has to pay the tax to the government or any type of uh, man any type of confusion or any type of things which we have to submit to the government in the form of documents or in the form of uh, uh, reports or in the form of explanation a person cannot do directly he has to take the help of a person who is having a fullest knowledge of the category then he will go for chartered accountancy then company secretary these two people are called as a professionals of commerce professional is different profession is different professional means a person who is having a fullest knowledge top to bottom in one subject that subject includes various sub parts also profession means you are only practicing that one topic or one category of work we will call that as a profession suppose doctor is there we will call him as a what is your profession that means he is doctor he is always his duty is to treat the patients give the prescription to the person who will come to him for any type of bodily disorders or any type of bodily problems then he is doing doctor will call that as a profession professional means those people who are having the fullest knowledge or skills or who have acquired the certification from a university or a certification from a institute which is specified or which has been recognized according to the parliament act in that field then we will call them as professionals they can advise in any matter okay so mainly these two people then we have business business so okay girls today i am closing my first class of introduction regarding the commerce of first year intermediate i think i expect that you like my class i stop the year business which i will continue in my next class so try to give conclude uh, 
comment on my explanation. If you have any type of clarification or any type of doubts also, please try to put as a comment. Thank you.